Mm, all right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. Sweet to see your faces, those that are able to have cameras on and 100% respect to your options to keep camera off. It's not, it's not, not referring to that at all, but lovely to feel the presence of people here in the Zoom room. And we are also extending our welcome and appreciation for those of you joining us um, in practice later on the YouTube channel. Thanks for being here. Um, and similarly with the choice, the like really, absolutely, um, to, okay, that's not what I want to say. I want to say uh, thank you for those of you who have been able to offer support Donna um, for this ongoing practice and sharing the Dharma and absolute appreciation and respect for the Donna of your presence, the gift of just being able to be here and show up, it means a lot. And um, just really wanted to name that appreciation. I never really talk about Donna here and I never, I don't give Donna talks at the end of my Dharma talks or anything. It's just kind of noted in the email. And so I just wanted to give voice to um, gratitude and appreciation for that support of your presence and the other ways you offer support. Right. Hmm. So tonight I'm uh, referencing a movie that was is from 2021. And I actually watched it like old school on a DVD instead of just streaming it. <laughs> you know, there's always these bins of sale DVDs now um that someone else had picked up and I had actually seen it before though I can't remember why or when but it was really good to watch it again and the film is called Land um and it's starring I'll put the link down below in YouTube and uh it's Robin Wright I think she was the director yes yeah, she was director one of the producers and also one of the stars, the lead actors in it. So it's definitely a passion project for, for her, I would say. Um, and it's so, it's, it's slow. There's lots of silence because most of the film, this character that she's playing is alone in the wilderness uh intentionally it's really a film about grief uh so if you feel touched by grief you might find it helpful and moving to watch this film uh, it's about a journey to healing and finding finding her way back into life and living after a great loss um and ah oh, it's really beautiful um so it's hard to talk about a film without giving away too much so let me just see how what to say here um uh at at several points she she it, um is in a lot of personal danger. <laughs> How to not give it away. And uh, amazingly, uh, somebody comes to find her in a state of near death. Uh, uh, and, and, <laughs> you know, I'm stuttering because I'm trying not to give too much away I hope you watch it um eventually she comes around and then asks this person that's nursed her back to life um 
why are you helping me? To which he replies, you were in my path. Oh. So good, so beautiful, so simple, so clear. Why are you helping me? You were in my path. And that just stood out to me so much. I wrote it, wrote it down. And um, I've been thinking about it quite a bit. About who and what is in our path. And who do we... Who do we think is in our way <laughs> rather than in our path? And who do we step around instead of uh, reaching for? And that can be uh, as, as seemingly simple or mundane, which is not, but as a spider. <laughs> that's in your path and you can help it to a safer place or today there was a caterpillar on the road and you know things like this uh, that who's you're in my path um yeah uh and then there's a caution around some of us who are caregivers by nature who who can um, take on too much sometimes, you know, because there's a lot of people in our path. There's a lot of need. There's a lot. There's so much grief and loneliness and uh, loss, etc. Mm, that and if we're kind of engaged in various aspects in a community or something it can you know well you're in my path you're in my path like oh whoa, whoa and then we can forget I'm also in my path you know maybe you need to like just stop and look in a mirror and be like why are you helping me you were in my path like do we forget to do that self-reflecting and self-care and self-compassion and um balancing our energy in that way so including that awareness um and there's something mm, sometimes is referred to as compassion fatigue or uh caregiver burnout and so i wanted to distinguish between or just draw some curiosity towards the difference between overextending ourselves and kind of draining our, our own well and what is called karuna. And this is the Pali word, K-A-R-U-N-A, -A, which means compassion, karuna. And... The true nature of karuna is boundless, is uh, infinite, boundless. It's the same nature as awake awareness. Um, and when an individual burns out or... Uh, mm, feels that compassion fatigue, that's something to be curious about, like how much self is in, in there, how much like I'm doing or I, you know, instead of tapping into boundless awake awareness that is already compassionate and wise action, wise response moves through this being. Not me doing, doing, giving, giving. There's lots to explore there around, around those nuances. Um, but in the, and in the Dharma, we have a whole group of practices called Brahma Viharas, which means 
to dwell in a divine place or um, Vahara is like an abode and divine is Brahma. So these group of practices are ways that we cultivate because it's called Karuna Bhavana, which means cultivate the way we grow and develop this heart abode the or the abode of the awake heart mind that naturally responds to suffering because you were in my path. Uh, but it is a bhavana. It is something we cultivate through a meditation practice. in a way that transforms our own relationship to soft to suffering we we know we know that all beings suffer all beings suffer to different degrees at different times absolutely but all beings um, experience clinging and it's resulting dukkha or suffering and we can tap into our own mm, loss our aging sickness death not being able to keep what we want not being able to get rid of what we don't like all these different ways that we all suffer and From that place, we can touch into this awareness that all beings share these same experiences. Uh, compassion mm, is love made visible. Compassion is an action. It's a respondability, how we respond to what is arising, what's in our path. Um, and with these Brahma Viharas, these heart abode practices, they have what's called a near enemy and a far enemy. A near enemy of Karuna, what we're talking about, compassion or Karuna, means it's something that really looks like it seems really similar but is different so it's a near enemy it seems like it but <laughs> look closely and so the near enemy of karuna is pity where one might have thoughts or feelings like oh i'm so sorry or that's so awful or i could never deal with that you see how it creates a self and it collapses the heart like, oh, I'm just so sorry. And it cuts you off from connection, from responding, because it just mm, contracts and collapses. And it seems like compassion. It seems like, oh, I'm, I'm, I really care. But you can maybe, if you just practice even saying it to yourself, like, I'm so sorry. You can see, like, I can't say it without my shoulders hunching up and my chest collapsing. My head goes forward. It's like, oh, <laughs> the body just tells you. Uh, the far enemy. So there's a near enemy, which seems like compassion, karuna. And the far enemy is its opposite. And that would be despair. Like the opposite of Karuna, where we respond uh, in, by feeling into our mm, shared experience of suffering. Uh, so the opposite of that is despair, where we're just overwhelmed and just like, it's all gone to shit. What can I do? You know, it's just that despair where we kind of give up or throw our hands up or, um, and that can also show up as cruelty or aversion, um, resentment, these other flavors of it where 
we create a separation between ourselves and the suffering that we may perceive in the world or with others or groups of others where it's just like feels like too much again it may feel like that because there may be some identification like some selfing around it uh, and so we want to tap into these practices that connect us to this boundless nature um, that is of the characteristic to respond to, to relieve suffering in whatever way, to lighten sorrow whenever possible. Okay. And, you know, that, that phrase from the movie, why are you helping me? You were in my path, can be a very beautiful way to live, to move. Because even if somebody's living in isolation, you know, I was trying to think about this. I was thinking about, what was her name? Tenzin Palma or something, you know, lived in a cave for many, many years meditating and practicing. Like, like I was thinking about how everybody's, somebody's in your path, like on the road or passing a neighbor or delivering your mail or the grocery line. But even if somebody's like really isolated, so I was thinking of her living in this cave for so long and all the critters that would be coming to visit as they certainly did, or the people that um, brought alms food uh, to, you know, nearby and would just leave it. Um, or even if we're not in direct contact with others, the heart-mind, awake awareness can just open to who who is in our path, who do, who, what's coming across our news feed, who's in our community, where, where, what's possible for us, including ourselves. Hmm. Okay. Um, so this practice, if you're not familiar with Brahma Vihara practices, is done there's phrases offered. These can be concentration practices, which we're not doing tonight because it's a longer practice and takes more time to settle into a state of concentration. Uh, when it's used as a concentration practice, the phrases are just repeated uh, pretty constantly. And that becomes the anchor rather than like breath being an anchor or sound or sensations these phrases but not the words the feeling the cultivation the bhavana of of that intention becomes the anchor so this is one way to practice with this uh, the other way is um i will be mentioning phrases uh, but it's to lean more towards the intention, the felt experience of these phrases, not to try to get into a state of concentration. We, one way to practice this is with what groups of people or, um, categories of people and we begin with a dear one or a friend or a somewhere in that there's just a natural inclination of the heart it could be an animal companion it could be um it's somebody that you know but they may have passed or you might not be in close contact with them, but it, it just kind of comes to mind like, oh, that's somebody that 
you just feel that draw too. And then we'll practice with self. And then we'll see how the time's going. We might do, yeah, there's other categories, our benefactor, neutral people, and difficult people. Yes, we'll throw that in there for sure. And then all beings. So mm, this is a way to, it's a bhavana again, a cultivation of uh, the untethering of our own hearts. When I say the word heart, I mean citta, C-I-T-T-A, which means heart mind, the aware heart, the heart of awareness. And mm, you don't need to feel loving. You don't need to feel compassionate. You don't need to feel mm, any particular way. The intention is to open to how it is. So perhaps if we go to a difficult person, we might not feel compassion. And we're like, no, actually, I'm still really pissed or whatever it is, right? And we feel we want to just turn towards feeling the heart disconnect. Sometimes you can feel it just like a little wall goes up. And I remember that doing this once. It was with Metsa Bhavana. And uh, we're just feeling the sensations in the air of the heart practicing with the dear one and then benefactors or teachers and there's just lots of pleasant abiding and cultivation and I could feel this in the heart beating just feeling sensations in the chest and then the the teacher guiding mentioned difficult beings and I was like my heart just stopped what I thought like did I just die like my I could feel my heart beating and then it just stopped I was still breathing my heart was still beating but I could not feel it anymore it was just like wow wow that was very insightful to just feel how that protection or cut off or judgment separation whatever layers was instantly there it was pretty fascinating and so that's not wrong <laughs> there's no added judgment to that but so liberating to feel that and realize how the sensations in the body really revealed a lot for me it was really helpful yeah and so the practice is cultivation with however it is like oh that's hard that that and i have an intention to untether that to untie those knots gently with care for myself boundaries are fine and just to gently cultivate like a seed in a garden i want to grow this capacity to tap into boundless compassion. All right. I think that's enough intro. Yeah. All right. Let's get ready to practice. I'll mute while I chug. So feel free to um, dim your lights or turn away from the computer. With these um, heart cultivation practices, it's very helpful to be as comfortable as you can. Some people like to lay down. Uh, you might, I don't know how the temperature is where you are. You might need some cushions or blanket, anything you need. So please feel free to... Um, Take some time to adjust so that you're beginning from a place of real care, 
compassion towards yourself and your dear body. So take some time to adjust that and I will do the same. See if you need any stretch or heart opening or neck releases. See if you need any touch or sighing breaths. Just meeting yourself with care how and where you are right now. So oh, that gradually, really gently and slowly, you arrive into presence with yourself. And as the name of the movie we're referencing, uh, it's called land, uh, feeling yourself land here and now in the body, in the center of nowness. Feeling what posture is supportive for this practice of awakening, but also this practice of cultivation and tenderizing of the heart-mind, the aware heart. I'm taking time to feel into any tension in the body that might not be needed right now or could soften to some degree. Check out the areas of habit tension in your body, perhaps the forehead or the jaw, the shoulders, hands, belly. Invite each exhalation to show you the qualities of landing and softening and grounding, widening. And then take some time to cultivate, touch into the intention for this practice, your intention. Setting a positive intention that you're doing this practice to make your life meaningful and beneficial 
to yourself and others. There may be other intentions that are here for you. Just take a moment to let that be known. the intention to grow our capacity to relieve suffering and lighten sorrow. And many people find it helpful, so just offering this as an option if you feel that it would be supportive at any time in this practice uh, to have some people like to place a hand on the heart or on the belly or to just hold your own hands as in a, a caring gesture. And then calling into awareness someone who is a, a dear one. They may be a friend or someone, some being where there's some heart connection and someone that is experiencing physical or mental suffering that is there's a natural heart inclining of the heart with this person remembering that all beings experience dukkha and suffering just trust who comes into awareness without too much thinking or uh, bouncing around like could be this person while well, they're suffering more and stuff like that just see what who naturally comes into that field of awareness and let them stand in for all the dear ones that are experiencing suffering and some people kind of have an image of that person. Some people just bring their name into awareness. Sometimes it's just a felt experience of connection with them. And let your heart mind open to the, the difficulties and heartaches this person is going through. And as it's a dear one, there may be mm, this leaning towards the near enemy of uh, great sorrow or pity or where there's some separation or distance or collapse of the heart. And if that comes for you, see if you can just open awareness to the space behind your body back behind the heart center and touch into that vast, boundless nature that naturally responds to suffering. And from this place, gently repeating these phrases in the silence of your heart, towards this dear one, with this dear one, may you be kind and gentle with yourself.
May you open to dukkha or suffering with wisdom and courage. May you be free from pain and sorrow. May you be kind and gentle with yourself. May you open to dukkha with wisdom and courage. May you be free from pain and sorrow. And you could re continue repeating phrases like this or use your own words. As you stay embodied, feeling the sensations in your own heart center, heart mind. The Buddha called this quality of karuna the quivering of the heart. When we open to and truly see suffering and are moved to do something about it. If you feel any overwhelm or collapse, you can place a hand at the heart or open into the spacious awareness of Karuna that is much bigger than this individual self, boundless. May you be kind and gentle with yourself. May you open to this difficulty with wisdom and courage. May you be free. And bowing the aware heart to this connection with the dear one and letting that rest back as you settle again into sensation of the body here and now, sensations in your own heart center, landing. And then as we know, and maybe can more easily connect with the suffering of other ones, especially dear ones, we now turn to feel our own self, feel your own body or an image of yourself. Some people find it helpful to connect with an image of themselves as a younger being. And opening to whatever aspects of your life that are difficult at this time. Without judgment, without added story. It doesn't have to be something extremely difficult, but just connecting with caring to your own pain.
the places where you feel afraid or contracted or overwhelmed or confused or numb. May I be gentle and kind with myself. May I open to dukkha or suffering with wisdom and courage. May I be free from pain and sorrow. And you can change these to your own words that resonate for whatever difficulty is here for you at this time. May I be free from fear or free from whatever it is. If you feel yourself caught in any stories or judgments, try to open into that wider space of awareness. Often it's helpful to connect with the space behind your body. And this boundless compassion moving through the back of the heart center. May I be kind and gentle with myself. May I take care of this difficulty with wisdom and courage. And energetically bowing to this cultivation of heart care, karuna with self. And then we'll open now to the category or grouping of people that we call neutral beings. This might be the ones that were in my path. It could be someone you pass in a hallway, in a shop, on a road. It could be all the critters that maybe we're not noticing. So these are the beings that we tend to not pay attention to. We don't have a strong like or dislike of. They're kind of a background. And yet they are crossing our path all the time. The majority of the people in our lives are neutral people. So for this practice, you could just choose one to stand in for all of these. Maybe someone you see fairly regularly in a shop you go to or someplace in your neighborhood, someone in your neighborhood or something like that, an actual person that you could have a sense of. And understanding that they also experience dukkha, loss and sorrow and attachment May you be kind and gentle with yourself.
May you open to this difficulty with wisdom and courage. May you be free from pain and sorrow. And then continue for a few moments on your own, either with your own words, words like this, but mostly with the feeling, the cultivation of opening the heart with awareness to those who are in our path. If you feel contracted into a small self around this, again, open into that spacious awareness that is already of the nature and capacity. to respond to suffering. You might notice that sometimes as we practice with neutral beings, it's harder to stay attentive. Uh, attention might drift off, uh, slip away, because there isn't as much charge, like or dislike with them. And so we just notice that, that sense of disconnect, and we begin again. And bowing the aware heart to this cultivation with the neutral beings. Again, reconnect with the body, felt experience here and now. Feel sensations in the area of the heart center. And now, if you choose, opening, turning awareness towards a difficult being, really try to not choose the most difficult being. This will just close the heart, and that's pretty much the end of the story. We start with just uh, where there's some confusion or disconnect or... Mm, mm, confusing communication, something slightly unresolved, a slight irritation, and just let that person come into awareness. It can also be someone that you love or someone that's dear to you can also at some times feel like a difficulty in some part of the relationship. And turning towards their, their suffering, their stress, the difficulties they're experiencing right now. May you be kind and gentle with yourself. Silently repeating that feeling, that seed growing. May you open to this difficulty with wisdom and courage.
May you be free from this hardship or pain, sorrow. May you be kind and gentle with yourself. May you open to Dukkha with wisdom and courage. May you be free. And then as you hear this bell ringing, just continue with your practice till through the end of the third sound. And with each ringing of the bell, feel it as vibrations radiating in all directions, opening to all beings everywhere, beyond the conception of the mind, just connecting with the nature of boundlessness, the nature of resonance, may all beings everywhere be free from dukkha. May all beings everywhere open to suffering with wisdom and courage. May all beings everywhere know true freedom and turn towards tender care with kindness and gentleness. Gently transitioning from that practice in a way that feels gentle. <laughs> mm. And uh, homework for this week <laughs> is uh, see what beings are in your path and include the mirror. <laughs> um, why are you helping me? You were in my path. And uh, if you're feeling depleted from overhelping as an individual, practice connecting to that spacious awake awareness that just naturally responds without a lot of thinking or planning or selfing. It's just like a child stepping onto the road. They just respond. It, or somebody falling and getting hurt. You just respond. It's like that. Just respond. Mm -hmm. All right, friends. So for those of you practicing with us on YouTube, I will be here again next week. And then we have four awesome guest teachers coming. So um, stay tuned.
Thanks for being here. And there's also a link down below to this movie I'm referring to, and um, also to the New Year's retreat, which is upcoming. Thanks for being here.